Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. What's up? What's popping? Do my love, the guy. This is another Generations The Legacy review of last night's episode. So please stay tuned and find out what exactly happened. I'm going to be starting with Marax's character. On last night's episode, he received a message saying that him and Lucy have been invited to his friend's wedding, Lefty, which will be held on Wednesday, but he didn't look excited about it because of how he looks. I think it's because of the pressure of trying to look perfect all the time, or he's trying to impress his friend Lefty. Now moving to Marjorie's character, he's still not giving his pair the support or the attention that a husband should give his wife. Although they both agreed to the divorce, both Spare and Marjorie did agree to keep up with their princess in the public eye, which Marjorie didn't do when he was asked to come and support Spare at the event that was held at the hospital. Speaking of Spare, on last night's episode, she got a phone call from Mr. Ndule, who works with the Department of Health, and Spare was so excited to share the great news with Masri, but he couldn't be bothered about it because he was too focused on himself to notice Spare's achievements. She even uttered the words, so much for having a supportive husband. Now, I would like to focus a bit more on Paul and Jared's characters. These boys are still working on their business and they are both doing everything in their power to advertise their new business. They are even working on the presentation of the label on the bottle, which Maraxa is helping them with. Speaking of Maraxa, he still doesn't feel like increasing the price from 16 rands, but Jera and Paul managed to persuade him to increase the price to 20 rands because they're now moving to the mainstream. And Maraxa did agree, but that's after he called them slay queens of money. To be honest, that was the most hilarious line of the night on last night's episode. Now, moving from that, I would like to focus a bit more on Nuntle's character. On last night's episode, Nuntle and Balis's lawyer went to see the minister to talk about Balis's condition and how she collapsed while she was in prison. But the minister claims that it's not his fault that she won't eat, so they shouldn't put the blame on him, but Nuntle, because she's the one who's behind it. Nuntle went on and brought some valid reasons why the prisoners went on hunger strike, which was the prisoners live in subhuman conditions. She went on to mention that she doesn't expect the government to sponsor the prisoners with luxury. Anyway, the minister doesn't want to be held responsible for the actions of the prisoners. But Nunte said it doesn't matter what he thinks because if Palace does die, her blood will be on his hands. I would like to go back to the character Mraxa. So on last night's episode, he tried on his old suit that he had when he was younger. And the suit was so tight, the buttons on the shirt looked like they were about to pop off. The most hilarious part of that whole scene was when he was channeling Michael Jackson through his dancing and the hat he was wearing, plus the white suit he had on. Maraxa really believes he's going to lose the weight before his friend's wedding, which is on Wednesday with the help of Masri. Anyway, we'll see what happens on tonight's episode. I would like to focus on Spare's character once again. 
On last night's episode, she had great news to share with Loyola about her promotion she got at the public hospital. She's now the new administrator. Loyola was concerned about how she's going to juggle two jobs, but she mentioned that she took some leave from the private hospital to focus on the public hospital. I would like to touch on Cosmo's character. Cosmo's condition hasn't changed one bit, but Gogflo, Lucy, Lucetti, and Sidi's mom came together to pray for his speedy recovery. While Lucetti was reading a verse from the Bible, she broke down in tears thinking about her uncle. I mentioned this character earlier in my video. Balasa has been sent to the public hospital after she collapsed. Liola had to look for a bed for her since none were available until Sister Bettina went and looked for a free bed. To make things worse, there weren't enough blankets as well. Lastly, Jara has stolen the drawing that was in Gogflow's junk that is believed to belong to an artist named Solomon. Jara plans to sell it to make some quick buck. We'll see what happens on tonight's episode. That's it for today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and show your love by clicking on that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.